guys, TC here. Uh, we're, look, we're doing uh, another crew and equipment guide video for you. Uh, the last one in the series is this. Um, we're looking at today the bane of all players' lives, <coughs> artillery. So, um, artillery in World of Tanks is here to prevent camping, um, or so the devs will tell us. Um, however, unfortunately, due to the way artillery is played, um, due to the damage that artillery can do, um, and in no small way due to um, XVM, um, artillery is not played correctly, in my humble opinion. Um, so it actually promotes camping. It you know it, it stops fluid gameplay and things like that, which. Um, it is bad for the game, I think, um, but overall artillery can be used for good, um, you just have to play it in such a way, um, which obviously um, isn't easy, um, but it's doable. So what we're going to do, as usual, we're going to have a look at crew skills, we're going to have a look at modules, um, and things like that. So without further ado, let's kick off. So crew skills. Um, as you can see this is my M5355. Um, it's one of my more advanced crews. Um, I do also have my gun carriage crew which we'll look at as well. Um, but for now we're going to start with the M5355. Um, this is my favourite artillery piece um, at the, at the, in, I think overall. Um, it's quick, it's mobile, it's gun is for an artillery piece it's not too bad. Um, it reloads fairly quickly, and uh, it seems to be a lot. It's a lot of fun to play. Um, I know, I know this may lose me followers and subscribers, but you know it is what it is. So, uh, crew skills. How should you crew an artillery piece if you want to play arty? Um, you start, in my opinion, um, almost like a tank destroyer crew. Uh, of old school tank destroyer crew, as we as we mentioned last year, you go six cents and you go full camo, and then you look at other skills. So, in my uh, this is just purely for me. I would say artillery. Um, the commander has six cents. The rest of the crew has um, camouflage, and then your second skill camouflage. Then. It depends on the RT that you're playing. Though this is an issue um, for the crews of artillery, you will find that you will be swapping and, and changing crews around quite a bit, and it can and sometimes does mean that you'll get confused um, in terms of the in terms of what skills you need and things like that. So we'll try and keep it as simple as pos as simple as we can do. Um, but I, but I'll look at, I'll show you the other parts as well. But yeah. Um, Six cents and camo, um, and then you know things like surprisingly snapshot. Um, Brothers in arms is really important, um, and then you know you know your other sort of intuition and things like that. Intuition on the loaders because um, these tanks normally have multiple loaders is really really useful. Um, if you're not aware of the intuition perk, what that does is it means that your crew will switch mid load. So if you're in an auto load or you're in something with a very long reload and you press the button to change keys, you have a chance that you will just flick over. You'll hear a, you'll hear a noise like a bell being rung. And it'll carry on loading from the same point. So if you're say for example I'm playing my 5355 or my M4043 here. Um and I'm I was loading HE but then I want to switch to AP. I have a chance when I push the button it'll go ding and switch and I can be 30 odd seconds into this 40 second reload on this tank for example and I will only have 10 seconds to load an AP shell. Really really useful when it kicks in but it is a when it kicks in it doesn't always kick in it's only a chance that it'll kick in. Um, so that's quite useful in the loaders. Um, but other than that it's, you know camo, camo, six cents um, and that's the way uh, that's, th that's the start off after that BIA definitely. BIA is really, really important, I think, and definitely the way to go. Um, so, if I look at my 5355 crew, 
As you see, the commander's got six cents, camo, jack of all trades and brothers in arms. The reason I put jack of all trades on is basically it's a special commander perk. Um, if I lose any crew members, the commander steps in, so to speak, and means I don't suffer as much of a loss. So if I lose a loader, my reload time doesn't go astronomical. Um, it's still fairly low. If you lose the driver or the gunner or anything like that, your gun, you know, those kind of things kick into effect. Then we've got the gunner himself. Um, snapshot, camo, armorer, and BIA. Um, snapshot because this is a turreted TV, turreted artillery piece. Um, so obviously, when you move in, it means that it's, it aims quicker and things like that. Armorer because if you do get splashed on counter arty and it knocks your gun out and you haven't got a repair kit, then you can then you don't lose all the accuracy. Of the, you don't you you don't lose all the accuracy. Doesn't go ridiculous. The uh, second gunner, this has two gunners, I've gone with Dead Eye, Camo, Snapshot and BIA. I've stacked Snapshot twice on the gunners on this and gone with Dead Eye. Um, Dead Eye doesn't stack if I remember correctly, I'll have to double check my facts on this, I don't think Dead Eye stacks. Um, so that's why I've gone with Dead Eye, so I get, more, I get, I get increased uh, module damage and then Snapshot obviously, so it just you know when you when you move in the t when you move in and re-aiming it should re-aim a little bit quicker. The driver I've gone with clutch braking, camo repairs, and BIA. Clutch braking just so it turns quicker when you're trying to when you're moving around the map to aim and things like that. Uh, camo because camo repairs because repairs and BIA. Technically I could switch them for other skills I think maybe firefighting or something like that but I figured repairs is as good as any. Then I've got my loaders here, so as you can see I've got safe stowage, camo, repairs and BIA and on this chap I've got camo, repairs, intuition and BIA. Um, I will be looking to stack intuition after I've completed BIA on this crew. Um, so you know that's what I've used. Now my gun carriage as you can see is a full female crew. Um, please don't hate me. <laughs> it was just, I, I wanted a gun carriage for pre the changes to art, pre, pre the changes to tier 10 clan wars. So as you can see we've got the sisterhood of steel in effect, then we've got six cents and camo, um, snapshot camo, snapshot again camo, camo repairs and then both of these guys, both of these girls have got intuition and I'm working on safe storage on them and we've got 100% camo. Um, so that's how I've set my crews up so the first two skills which are obviously the most important ones because they'll set you off I would say the commander uh, six cents and camo the rest of the crew's first skill is camo and then the second skills are ones that help you with um, you know so snapshot as you move into re-aim safe storage or intuition it depending on how many loaders you have um, so that you, you, know, you don't have to wait through your long reloads and things like that um, and then just stack camo uh, and then just stack BIA or, assist, or you know the equivalent. Um, I think that is the right way to go, in my opinion. So that's the crew skills taken care of. Uh, let's have a look now at the equipment. The equipment varies depending on whether the tank is an enclosed one, like this one, like the gun carriage in the 5355, or whether it's open top, like the Lafouf here. Um, as you can see, no roof on the turret. So if it's enclosed, such as this, such as the 5355 and the gun carriage, or Bert the Avenger, then what I w what I tend to run is a rammer, vents, and a gun lane drive. You may ask why I don't run a camo net. Um, I don't run a camo net because I don't really see the point of running a camo net on an RT piece. If you play an artillery properly, you don't stay in the same position. Um, you know, you shoot and scoop, as they call it. Um, so the camo net is pretty much null and void in my opinion um, so you do everything to maximize to ma maximize your aim time your reload time um, and just the general performance of the vehicle um, obviously as you can see this is a 36.5 second reload and I've got a 45.9 second reload on the gun carriage open top vehicles as you can see you can't run vents so you do run the lane drive and the rammer and then a camo net um, I basically run a camo net because I can't find anything else in the list 
that could be of use. I know a couple of people who run spore liners um, to protect against counter arty. I know people. I know some people also mount binoculars on them, so you get better view range to spot scouts when they come in to get you. Um, I think running something like that can be counterintuitive though, because if you run a camp, if you run binoculars and you, you spot a scout before they spot you, it knocks off six cents on the scout, so they're going to know you're nearby anyway. So, you know, I don't see the point personally myself. I can understand why, but I don't see it as a beneficial to myself. So for me, my two main ones will be a lane drive and a rammer. Lane drive so it aims quicker, rammer so it reloads quicker. And then if you can mount them, vents, because that just adds a, that just knocks it on a bit more for you. Or if you can't do that, a cam on it. Um, so that's my view on one of the most hated tank classes in the game. Um, as you can see, I pretty much have aced all of my artillery. Um, I'm sorry. I you know I before I had my PC that I, before I had the PC I currently work on at the minute, um, I didn't have a PC that allowed me to, to to you know play anything much more. So because of the top down view of artillery, you do actually get a better FPS. So people will actually play this if they can't play normal tanks. Um, in terms of the lines in the tech trees for artillery pieces, um, the Germans you normally find are quite accurate. Um, and have reasonable alpha damage, um, so they go all the way up to the tier 10 GWE 100. Um, there are rumours that this tank is going to be changed for something else, um, but they are just rumours at the minute. The GW is quite a, quite a different artillery piece as well because it actually has armour. Um, as you can see here, its hull armour is actually viable to a degree. Um, so. The, that's the that's the that's the the flavor for you for the Germans is um, up to about here the GW Panther they they're fairly quick but they don't have very wide gun arcs the SFL the PZSFL 4B here is a is an is an odd one because it actually has a turret that uh, turns quite wide along with the GW Panther um, so they're quite different but you will find that as a whole they don't have a very big gun arc. Um, they take a while to aim, but the reload isn't too bad. Your Russians are very strange. Um, they've up to about here. They're fairly quick on the reload. They're fairly accurate, and they've got fairly good range. Uh, the Su-5 has quite a short range, but it okay. It's, think of it more like a tier four Bert or tier four Bishop. Um, then you've got the SU-8, 411, 51, 14-2 and the 212A. Um, these all have quite long reloads, do a lot of alpha damage, but don't have very big gun arcs. So you you know you have to be very wary that with the Russians up to tier 9, and including tier 9, they don't have big gun arcs, they have very long reloads, they're not very accurate, but when they hit they do a lot of damage. And then you get to the tier 10, the object 261. Uh, the 261 is quite rare because it has a very quick reload for a tier 10 RT. I think it's about 26 seconds or so. Um, so it reloads really, really quickly for an artillery piece. Um, I know it says 35 there, but people have said you can get it down to 26 or so. Um, and it's viable to fire AP shells from this tank with 360 pen because it is very accurate and very quick aiming. Um, so you would normally find 261 drivers fire AP more than HE um, just for the added penetration and because the accuracy and the reload time allows them to do that and it's also quite quick and mobile. The American artillery. American artillery is typically very American. <laughs> it, it does a huge amount of splash damage. Uh, the T92 has about a 5 or a 6 meter splash range um, up to 11.6 with premium. They do a lot of damage. Um, again, the AP shell from the T92 is devastating. A lot of people have succumbed to that. Um, but along the line, they're not quick. Re if, if the reasonable reload speeds, a lot of big alpha, not very accurate, but big splash. French artillery. Um, the French artillery I'm finding is very low splash, quick aiming time, um, low damage. So they're, they're more of a DPM artillery piece if there is such a thing. 
Um, the batch at 55, 58 is very rare because it has a four shell auto loader. It takes 80 odd seconds to 70, 72 to 80 seconds to reload, but it you know you do have the benefit that it's um, an auto loader, so you can fire four shells in quick succession and do a lot of damage very quickly. I think it takes about four or five seconds to reload each shell in the clip. Um, which most tanks can't actually repair the tracks that quick. So if a Bat 58 RT tracks you and you don't have a repair kit, you, you're not likely to survive unless you're in something with a lot of hit points. But even then, you're going to be very crippled at the end of it. Um, it's, the French artillery is also very quick and very mobile to get around the battlefield. So they, they're, they're quite interesting. Uh, the British artillery pieces are all... The British artillery pieces are interesting. The gun carriage, ha the gun carriage, and the burr and the bishop all have a fantastic gun art where the shell goes really high and drops really high, really from a from, uh, drops vertically almost onto engine decks and does huge damage. But they don't have very good gun arc. Um, they're only very good when you are a long distance away. But the shell takes a long time to get there. The 207 and the 3805 though are quite are odd in this lineup. Um, they aim quite quickly, they fire quite quickly, they don't do a lot of damage from in artillery terms, but they do um, but they do have quite quick shell travel time. Um, Bert we all know and love. <laughs> and the bishop is quite trolley at the minute, but that is due a, a bit of a, a bit of a change in the next patch, I understand. Um, so that's the artillery in the game. Um, that's my review. Hopefully it's helpful to you. Um, and you can, if you play artillery, you can use it to your effect. Um, if not, I know it's not the most liked, liked one, but you know, hopefully it helps you. But anyway, guys, hopefully I'll speak to you soon. And um, any questions at all, just drop them in the chat. I'm quite happy to help, and I'll catch you later. Bye, guys.